Bip, bip. What is up, ninjas? My name is Samworld, and today I want to show you guys how to make bass lines like 1788L, which are very aggressive, all right? Now, we're going to be doing this all inside of Serum, but keep in mind, you can still do a, a bit of post-processing to get to sort of like his bass lines. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of bass lines that we can make that are going to sound really good, just to give you guys variation so that you guys can go ahead and make your own sounds in this style, guys. Now, if you guys want a sound mic that you can work with to make this style of music, make sure to check out the brand new Desolation sound set that just came out over at evilsounds.com. Made it with the help of you guys and again thank you guys so much for those of you guys that join me in the live stream so let's get straight into this guys so we can check this out so <clears throat> right now i just have this simple you know kick and snare it's gonna get pretty loud just giving you a heads up guys here so the first thing i recommend you guys do here is just pick a wave table that you really think sounds good you know going with basic shapes is fine so if we decide to go with a square negative three for me now what we want to do now is, and the key to this is going to be to use oscillator B and find like a very nasty wave table that works well with um, oscillator A which we're going to use to FM. So here some of the ones you can go for are like Razor, uh, Scream, anything that has a lot of dirt to it you're going to see that it's going to work really good. Here. Negative 3 here. Now what we want to do now here is do a bit of a fem. Now if you hear a lot of the 1788L bass lines or 1788L, um, he has a lot of um, wide bass lines. So the way that we get stuff wide inside of Serum is by utilizing this little unison and going to two voices. Now you can go up more if you want to detune a bit, uh, detune the bass line. But the key thing here is that uh, when we have more than one sound, we now have a left and a right. And you can see that Serum shows you that there. So now we're going to have a bit of stereo. We can lower the detunement and we're still going to keep that stereo. And this is start it's going to start sounding like this with a bit of a fat okay now from here this baseline here you can choose to use a different fm pitch ratio what that means is that we have a ratio with negative three to negative three that's one to one negative uh, and then we're going to have negative two here that's one to two two and one to three the higher you go <clears throat> with this guy you know if you're going to go higher make sure you lower it but the higher you go with it the more high frequencies the more ha higher harmonics you're going to get from the sound but at the same time you are going to lose a bit of power in the low end and the mid lows so keep that in mind but as we do this this is how it starts to sound all right negative and negative three you can see that negative three has the most power but when you go negative two negative one you start to get a different vibe of a sound and in those scenarios it's good to use a sub with direct out with a bit of a triangle if you want more of a sub that's more like mm, or oh you want a boomy sub now with this genre i recommend you go with the triangle wave which is going to have more harmonics in the sine wave but it's going to have a bit more like presence because if we're playing super low like in the key of d we're going to be able to hear now negative three on that bat so it's up to you to decide what you want to do with this, guys. But if you do go negative three with this ratio, make sure to put the volume up. Don't be scared of having this one up, as this one's going to make a good layer for our mono signal. All right. So the good thing about that is that if this collapses into mono, a lot of the times that little wave there can carry us. So if I go. So you can see this kind of provides a bit more power in the in the mid lows and the lows. So it's good to have like that layer there if you're going to be using that negative. <laughs> All right. So from here now, this is where it starts to get a little bit kind of like you can add hyper, you can add distortion and whatnot. If you add hyper, you are going to make this into a, a, um, a stereo sound. Just keep that in mind. But we can still use it with a bit of distortion. Diode is going to be the best one uh, that you can use. <laughs> so you can see it starts to sound very nice. So it's going to be up to you there, and then we can use a bit of OTT if we want here, just a tiny bit. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do there. I'll use a bit of the OTT and just leave it there. In fact, no OTT for me, because I like the fact that it has more highs when there is no OTT, so we're going to leave it like that. And from there, we're going to be done. You can add other stuff like phasers if you want before the distortion so that you start to get very unique stuff. Lower the rate down and then play with the frequency. So it gives it a different tonality, as you can see. All right. <laughs> Even here with the hype. Increase the two. You get more of a fucking whack as you can hear. So it's up to you to decide, guys. I'm giving you guys options here so that you can go in and make it yourself. But as you can see, it's it's not that hard. And if you want to add movement to this at all, you can add like a a quick LFO change to hear this part here with an M. You know, put this at negative one. So you get a bit of movement. There. 
You can even add it to the FM, just be really careful with you Move this to the left a bit here, so it's more of a So again, you know, just don't overdo it because a lot of times when you overdo it, it, it tends to ruin the sound or you get too much of something. So you just got to be really careful with that. So we're going to stay here with this sound here. Move this. And negative three on that. Give us the volume. Yeah. And then once you have that, now we can do a bit of post-processing on it. Now, I do recommend that you guys do serial processing. What that means is that you're going to use like two or three OTTs or two or three reverbs or two or three compressors. Now, the point of serial processing, guys, I think it's S-E-R-I-A-L. -I Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right. Is so that you don't have one OTT do all of the work. You, ha you spread it out between three. And what this does is it gives you a cleaner OTT. For instance, if you have a, a compressor in real life, like an analog one, and you're just really compressing hard with one you start to get a bit of artifacts because the compressor is running hot as they would say it's like hardcore just pushing down it's it's overloading but when you do serial processing you kind of spread out the workload a bit so that it's a bit smoother so that's what i like about this so that's what we're going to be using three otts now again it's called serial processing we're not just doing this because we're like we want this fucking loud but it's it's for again if, if anyone asks he's like why the fuck are you running three otts homie you just tell them yo i'm just doing a little bit of serial processing and my thought behind this is the fact that i don't want one ott to be running at 100 percent i'd rather spread it out between three otts so that it sounds a bit smoother um, and, you know, it might not work for the digital world. You know, I might be talking out of my ass here, but when it came to the analog stuff back in the day and you pushed it really hard, you ran the compressor hot, again, just doing a lot of work on it, it would cause a little bit of artifacts, a little bit of bad stuff to happen. So that's where this technique kind of comes from. So what we're going to do is lower the amount of the first one to 12%, the next one maybe 14%, and the last one we'll run it a little bit harder at 22%. So we get that, we take get rid of this. So you can see it kind of clamps down on the sound now, but the secret here that I want to give you guys is that a lot of people use OTT, they don't know what the hell it's doing, they're just like, oh, it makes it sound good. But what I want you guys to do is to get rid of this downwards compression. Now, the downwards compression is a standard compression, you guys know, which when the threshold is hit, the volume is reduced. Now, OTT does two things. First off, it does that, and then it does upwards compression or expansion. Now, what upwards expansion does is the opposite of downwards compression. When the threshold is hit, it increases the volume. So, if we're trying to get loud with these bassons, if we want them to be in your face, you got to get rid of that downwards compression guys the last one you can use it to tame frequencies control frequencies a little bit better this one right here but these ones you want to run them like with upwards expansion that's what it's called now you know that so now we get rid of you can see it's going to create like this kind of expansion upward so the sound's always in our face. Now with this one we can do the same thing and if you feel like there's too much of a certain frequency you can always ease up on it and move down Now you can see the difference it makes. So we're getting, literally squeezing the sound out for everything it has. Literally, we're robbing the sound and it's like, give me all your money, even the pennies, the nickels. It don't matter, you know, other currency. That's what we're doing here. But again, it sounds good and that's kind of like the goal we want. After that, I do recommend that you guys run a span through it just to see how your bass is sounding in terms of the frequency spectrum. Like, does it have too much highs, too much mids, uh, too much lows? And you can see it's just a wall of sound straight across, just evened out. You know, that's how you know you, you did it good. Um, and from there, you can kind of be like, ah, I, don't, I don't like my these guys too much. This lower. So you get that, or you can choose to add high. Or you can choose to, you know, get rid of highs. Or mid, mid high. So you can take it everywhere you guys want. You can even run an amp through it, but I would be careful here because sometimes the amps can fuck shit up. So let's just be a bit careful. Run it like very low here. You can see the amp gives a lot of mid lows there so that's one baseline that i wanted to teach you guys how to make now as we move along i want to show you guys other techniques that you can utilize and these are not going to be 1788 ll um, or 1788 l stop baselines i mean he does use them here and there but these are nasty baselines now when it comes to sound design guys the most basic waveform that we can have is the sine wave it's just a fundamental frequency it's good if you if you look at it through a span or through a spectrum it's just like literally one mountain that you have to go over so the, the nice thing about this is that it's very pure it's like it's on altar it's a virgin it hasn't done drugs it hasn't done anything like the saw that has a lot of experience and a lot of harmonics so with the sign what we can do is we can use it 
Layer it with white noise, which is another pure substance there. Um, and we can go with the bright white, but experiment with different uh, sounds there. So it's going to sound like. And then we distort the shit out of it. And, and it gives us really nice vibes, as you're going to see. So you hear that little. Get rid of the white. You get that. But with the white. You start to get that. Now, with the with, from here, what you can decide to do is FM as well from oscillator B. Uh, with different saw, saw uh, pitch ratios again, one to one, one to two, and all that good stuff. And then we start to t now we start. Yeah. Make this there if you want now. And you can get really cool stuff, guys. Now, from here, you know, you can start to put OTT since the sound is so pure and it's not as busy as other wavetables that we've seen. We can actually go in and start just like doing stuff to it, like just crazy stuff like we can use two overdrives where one targets the lows and one targets the high you take so you can see what it does and the reason we do that is because we don't want to lose the low end but let's say you're going to layer this with a sub like a different sub then you can say fuck the lows and then you can just go with two overdrives one hitting the mids and one hitting the highs and you get different vibes so play around with that it's honestly a lot of fun use amps and and have fun guys but this ott trick is really cool and again it's not just putting otts like balls out who gives a hell it's about serial processing and hopefully you guys understand that and you can use that in various parts of stuff guys but that is has been how to make very aggressive bass sounds like 1788l i wanted to make this quick tutorial for you guys and i hope that you guys learned something i hope you guys have fun with the desolation sound set if you want to support my channel and you want to make sounds like this or you want to use sounds ready to go like this learn from them make sure to check it out and without further ado guys you guys have a good night i'm for sure gonna have a good night and thank you guys for all your support for all, all those all those of you guys that have supported it already peace out